Welcome to our service on this first Sunday after Easter. Our readings today come from Did Martin, from Valerie Marriott and Anthony Brassi, and the service, as always, has been put together by our organist, Ben Humphreys. Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults, Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Psalm 16 Preserve me, O God, for in thee have I put my trust. O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, Thou art my God, my goods are nothing unto thee. All my delight is upon the saints that are in the earth, and upon such as excel in virtue. But they that run after another God shall have great trouble. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, neither make mention of their names within my lips. The Lord himself is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Thou shalt maintain my lot. The lot is fallen unto me in a fair ground. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. I will thank the Lord for giving me warning. My reins also chasten me in the night season. I have set God always before me. 
for he is on my right hand, therefore I shall not fall. Wherefore my heart was glad, and my glory rejoiced. My flesh also shall rest in hope, for why, thou shalt not leave my soul in hell. Neither shalt thou suffer thy Holy One to see corruption. Thou shalt show me the path of life. In thy presence is the fullness of joy, and at thy right hand is the pleasure for evermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The lesson is taken from Acts, chapter 2, starting at verse 14. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. And at verse 22. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. Praise be to God. We say the Magnificat together. My soul does magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him, throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath holpen his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed for ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The second lesson is taken from the Gospel according to St John, chapter 20, beginning at verse 19. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so I send I you. 
And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand at his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands. And reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side. And be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. And many other signs, truly, did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written, that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. Here endeth the second lesson. We now say together the Nunc Dimittis. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Let us pray. The Collect for the first Sunday after Easter. Almighty Father, who hast given thine only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification, grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness that we may always serve thee in your pureness of living and truth through the merits of the same thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The second and third collect for evening prayer. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels and all just works do proceed, Give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, 
and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray for the Church and the world, and thank God for his goodness. The response to Lord in your mercy is, hear our prayer. In our prayers today, we remember the whole Church. We pray for our Bishop, Rachel, and the Church in these parishes. We pray for today for the Church in Ireland. We pray that the peace which the Lord gives may be felt and known in our own lives. We pray for those baptised at this time, for Lucy Bleakin, Winnie Heathcote. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those preparing for marriage and those who have anniversaries at this time, Ian and Jess Butler, James and Fiona Dunkley. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our Queen and Government. We pray for those working in care homes, for protection and courage. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and the bereaved. We pray for those we know who need our prayers at this time. We remember especially Paul Barrett and his family. But Jenny Harris, Katie White and her family, for Nigel and his family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember the departed, for those whose years and minds fall at this time, particularly remembering John Burgess of Didmartin and Mary Broad of Hawkesbury. We also remember the recently departed, Alan Cox and John Jones. May the souls of the departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord, to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfil now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore. Amen.
May I speak in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The picture of the disciples staying behind locked doors in Jerusalem for fear of the Jewish authorities is one that is highly pertinent today. Many of us are living behind locked doors for fear of contamination. Like the early disciples, we would not let someone in unless we were sure it was safe to do so. In the case of the early disciples, it was important not just to save their lives, but also to save the message. If they were arrested and crucified along with their master, then who would there be to spread the gospel? If James the Elder had been arrested and killed at this stage, who would have become the first bishop of Jerusalem? If Peter had been arrested and killed at this stage, who would have become the first bishop of Rome? There would have been no St. Stephen for Saul to persecute, no Damascene conversion, no missionary journeys to Antioch, Asia and Greece, and no epistles. So it was important that the fledgling Christian community was not martyred at this point. If they had been, then the gospel would have ended with crucifixion. So the fear may have been self-protective from their point of view, but from ours, they were protecting the gospel. The same is true of the coronavirus threat to our home. If someone walks across the threshold of our home, we may fear the possibility of becoming infected. But looked at in a broader context, if we get infected, then anyone who we stand next to in the shopping queue could also become infected. So it's not just for our own safety, but for the safety of others. But coming into this context of fear, what is the first word the disciples hear Jesus say as he appears to them? Peace. Peace upon you. It is precisely at such a moment of fear and anxiety that the disciples need to hear those words, peace upon you. You may recall that in chapter 14, Jesus said to them, Peace I send on you, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives, I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. That was then, but this is now. Then it was a warning, now it is for real. And the fear of the Jewish authorities is very real. What changes all this is seeing Jesus, the peace he brings, and the hope that seeing his hands and side confirm. Then their fear is turned to joy. The experience of seeing Jesus transforms their fear into joy. How is it that the risen Jesus can come into our home and give us peace and show us his hands and side? Faith tells us he has. He is now in your home. Maranatha, he is with us. But perhaps we need to make use of our formative experiences to experience God's presence. What reminds us of God? What brings us to our knees? Is it reading the Bible or perhaps saying a certain prayer or singing a hymn? In the novel by Jan Martel, The Life of Pi, Pi experiences something of God in the temple and it never leaves him. I quote from his novel. I am a Hindu because of sculptured cones of red powder and baskets of yellow turmeric, because of garlands of flowers and pieces of broken coconut, because of the clanging of bells to announce one's arrival to God, because of the patter of bare feet against stone floors down dark corridors pierced by shafts of sunlight, because of the fragrance of incense. I became loyal to these sense impressions even before I knew what they meant or what they were for. I am aware of presence, not personal the way we usually feel presence, but something larger. My heart still skips a beat when I catch sight of the murti of God residing in the inner sanctum of a temple. My hands naturally come together in reverent worship. My palms need to feel the heat of a hallowed flame, whose blessing I bring to my eyes and forehead. We too need to touch base with old religious habits and rituals that bring us close to that awareness of God and to that sense of God's presence that cast, does cast out fear and replace it with joy. May you hear in your heart those words of Jesus. Peace, peace upon you. Amen. Redeeming work is done, fought the fight, the battle won. Love our sons, eclipses 
So let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you now and always. Amen.